this time we'd like to open it up to anybody that'd like to share a memory of Janet. Yeah, if you want to speak, um, how about if we just put the mic down here? And you can speak into the mic. Does that sound good? Okay. I don't know how to do that. That's, that's not my paper. Right? <laughs> so again, if you'd like to share a memory of Janet, come on up. What's going to happen is everybody's going to say, well, I don't want to go first. So once the first person goes, and everybody will be more comfortable. Do you have a memory you'd like to share, Pat? I, uh, I knew Janet for a long time, but I really didn't really know her. Um, I learned a lot about her when, when we were caring for her um, the last couple of months. And uh, she was a trip. Say, uh, everything you said is true. If she uh, liked you and you knew it, and and um, he just was funny. So I I have memories of her that touched my heart when I was caring for her. And one of the things that that just kind of struck me funny was um, when the hospice nurse was there admitting her. And there's a whole lot of questions and information and everything, and and he is um, telling her, you know, and equipment. There's, you know, we have the overbed table, we have the hospital bed, we have this, we have that. And Janet says, "I want everything that's coming to me." <laughs> she's probably the, the first patient I've ever heard. <laughs> Um, it was it was time consuming um, between Mary Jane and Linda and myself, but it was such a blessing, such a blessing to be able to care for her and help her because she had nobody else, and and so I I was so blessed by that opportunity that I had to be with her and help and help you, Mary Jane and Linda. So I look forward to when Jesus comes again, and we'll see that feisty Janet. <laughs> My wife and I moved to New Smyrna Beach in April of 2004. So the first thing that we needed to do was buy some food, and we went to Publix. And just left of the produce section was this lady inviting people to sample what she had prepared. So I walked up and I said, uh, what do you have here? And she explained. And I said, uh, could I read the ingredients? And she looked at me and she said, are you on some kind of special diet? <laughs> and I said, no, but I'm kind of particular about how processed food, what has been included in there. So of course there are other people waiting, and she said, just a minute, just step to the side there, and you know, I get through with these people. So she went and got me a box and said, here, read the ingredients. <laughs> so I read the ingredients and uh, I decided not to eat the sandwich. And she said, you know, there's nothing wrong with this. And I said, I didn't say there was. <laughs> so of course there are people coming through and she said, just a minute, don't go away. <laughs> so I'm waiting in line there for these people to parade through and get, you know, their sandwich. And finally it clears up, and she says, come here. I'm particular about what I eat also. So I want to invite you to come to a place where you don't have to read the ingredients. And I said, I've never met someone that is in charge of samples that's this aggressive. <laughs> 
So I said, where is that? And she said, uh, I go to the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And we have potluck next Sabbath. And you need to be there. <laughs> and I said, uh, we will be there. And she said, really? I said, yeah. If you have food that I don't have to read the ingredients of how it was prepared, we'll be there. That's all I said. So on Sabbath, we show up, and who is the greeter? <laughs> now, if you've never been hugged by Janet, you ain't been hugged. <laughs> and in my case, I got a kiss. <laughs> My next interaction with Janet was with Mary Jane. And then we met again at uh, Ricky and Judy's at the Bible study. Then we left this area and came back about nine years later, April 28, 2016. And we opened the door. And who's the greeter? <laughs> and she says, she couldn't say it. <laughs> and she finally said, I know you. What is your name? And I said, I'm the guy that would need your son. <laughs> but we noticed, what all of you noticed, that things were not right. Even as part of actors. So, my wife being a nurse, she says, This is my girl. So then my wife talked to Judy, and we're both nurses, and Judy kind of brought her up to date on what she was going on. And <clears throat> the last time I saw Janet, we went with you and Kyla and Susan to her home. And uh, to her apartment, and, and uh, we noticed we had visited her before, but this time we knew. I mean, she was laying on her sofa, face to the wall, and several people went up and spoke to her and kissed her, and tried to dialogue, no response. So I think we left about 10 or 15 minutes after you and Kyle and Susan left. But then my wife said, before we go, why don't we sing a song for her? And I look at my wife and said, really? <laughs> she hasn't responded to anything. We've touched her, we've hugged her, we've kissed her, we've spoken to her. There's been no response. And she says, we're going to sing a song to her. So we sang Amazing Grace. And the moment we began singing, she grabbed the rail and she lifted up her head and I, I stopped singing. I said, what's going on? <laughs> and so we finished the song and the whole time her head was up and moving and that was an incredible experience. So it seems to me that there was a response there of some kind, of physical response and audible. So that was our way of saying goodbye to Jen. She was a blessing. Yes. And yes, I liked her straightforwardness. You didn't have to wonder about where she was at about anything. You may not have agreed, but you were going to get it. And she was a blessing and a, a wonderful memory, a memory for us. And I think that's a great picture of her. Chuck, that was a great story. I liked it. And I want to, I, I kind of want to add to that a little bit. I, uh, uh, it hasn't been that long ago, you know, you have been here a year, a couple years, a year and a half or so. And my first impression was the hug I got at the front door. Um, I, and I, along with my wife, had been going over there a few times. And it came, it came down to the time where we were just about ready to do the anointing on her. And I think we got there early and we were, we were sitting around and uh, kind of waiting a little bit. And 
And uh, like you said, she was in the bed facing the wall on that day. And uh, I looked around a little bit and I looked for a little brochure or something and I found thoughts and amount of blessings laying there. So I picked it up and I just went over and I asked her, uh, Jenna, could I read to you? And she rolled over and said, sure. So we started in the front and we wrote, read through and some were a few questions and answers and we had a little dialogue right there. And, uh, and it was great. And then the, the, uh, everybody got together and we did the anointing and we went home and I think the next day uh, she told Linda, would Bob come back and read again to you? Beautiful. I didn't, get, I didn't get to do that. I went the next day, or the, shortly after, and by then she had uh, slipped enough more that she really was uh, kind of incoherent. But what a blessing for that one day. Amen. Thank you. Anybody else? This is from Revelation 21 4. We're, we're going to read this before we uh, sing our song, uh, closing hymn number 427. Revelation 21 4 says, he will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. For the older for the old order of things has passed away.
Now, I know a few things about Janet, too. She used to tickle me, especially before she got her hearing aids. And I'm not trying to make fun of people who can't hear, but you would have a conversation with Janet, and it was a different conversation she was having back with you. And, you, know, you, and you, you never could straighten the conversation out because you were just wasting your time because she was already, she, she, when she made up her mind, it was, that was just Janet. She, she, was, she loved life. And, and I'm going to miss her. This, this, I'm, I'm just going to miss her every time I come in. Get me started, Bob. <laughs> Uh, I love Janet, and I know that y'all love Janet too. And I'm going to read the last reading on, the, on our bulletin before we pray. For the Lord Himself will come down from heaven with a command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God, with the trumpet call of God, and the dead and the dead in Christ will be read, will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage each other with these words. Amen. Amen. Father, we just thank you so much for our, our dear sister Janet. We thank you that you allowed her to share her life with us, that you brought her into our lives for a reason, to teach us things that that you needed for us to know. And uh, we just want to just tell you how much we thank you and how much we love Janet. And we can't wait for that day that when you have prepared your people to meet you in the air, that we will see Janet again. Amen. Lord, we just can't wait for that day. We just thank you and we praise you. And I pray that everyone here will hear the voice of Jesus one day saying, well done, my good and faithful servant. Amen. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.